Good morning, everyone. Oh, that's loud. Does that work? Can everybody hear me? So, um, good morning to everybody. Welcome. Today we are standing outside of uh, Jerusalem, and uh, we don't have any donkeys, but we do have palm branches, and we do have a lot of reason to celebrate. Um, not even the snow can keep us from going into um, into the holy city today to celebrate um, the coming of the king jesus messiah and uh, as we go through the service today we we get to see what kind of a king he is um, because we're going to go with him into jerusalem we're going to wave our palm branches um, people you know they put their coats on the ground when uh, so that he could ride in the king and uh, so we're going to wave our palm branches and uh, some of us have brought uh, coats as well um, to lay down before the king. And uh, we're going to be donating those to um, Salvation Army. So we'll talk about that a little bit more with the children's message in just a minute. But uh, if you, um, we're going to start the service here, hear the gospel for Palm Sunday, and then start singing and go into the sanctuary. I'm waving our palm branches. Okay. Oh, very good. You do that well. And then uh, waving our palm branches, if you have coats, you can just keep on going all the way up to the front and put the coats um, down by the altar and then um, go around and, and come back and get your seat. And if you don't have coats, you're welcome to just slide into a, a pew uh, row when you get there. We'll sing the songs and uh, pray the prayers, and then we'll be hearing the story of the rest of the week as well as Jesus um, suffers and dies, so that we can remember that he came, he came into Jerusalem to be the king, but he came to be a king who came to die, um, who came to serve us. And so this morning, um, we begin with our greeting, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. When Jesus and his disciples had drawn near to Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives overlooking the, the holy city, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks and coats on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Let us pray. Gracious God, we uh, gather here this morning outside of the holy city to follow our King Jesus into Jerusalem. We join our voices with the crowd shouting, Hosanna, save us, help us, dear Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Be with us today, Lord, as we um, celebrate your kingship and your kingdom. Be with us as we celebrate your love and your coming to us and to all the world. Be with us and help us, Lord, to uh, follow Jesus through the celebration, um, through the excitement, all the way to the cross today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And all the people um, shouted, Hosanna! 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 Hosanna in the highest. Let us go then and uh, welcome our king as he comes to save us and to save the world.
Hosanna. 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 Hosanna in the highest. You can be seated. I'd like to invite the children to, uh, to come up for a minute. You could. Go get your palms. Yep. Sorry. Because that's what we're talking about today. So, good morning to you all. Do you all, do you like parades? You guys, who likes a parade? Who likes a parade? All right. Do you have a favorite parade? Mm, my favorite parade? Well, Prescott Days. How many people like the Prescott Days parade? We all do. We'll say that one first, okay? Yes. My second favorite parade is the River Falls Parade. Um, because the River Falls Parade um, you get chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. Yes. And right behind it, a carton of, of milk. And if you're really, really good and really, really lucky, it's chocolate milk. Okay. So, but everybody loves a parade. Um, and uh, parades are a lot of fun. Um, parades are celebrations. Um, uh, who knows, maybe, maybe someday the Minnesota Twins will have another parade. For those of us who are old enough to remember those two a long time ago. Um, the Green Bay Packers. Well, do they have parades? I, I don't know. 
I suppose they are. They remind us of the Green Bay Packers, and they give us hope because they are green. Yeah. Yeah, these are cool, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. You, mm -hmm. Yep. Ah, okay. Yep. So, anyway, um, there was a big parade on the day that Jesus came into Jerusalem, too. Everybody was really, really excited because they had been waiting for Jesus for a thousand years. Yes, that's right. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Um, Jesus, everybody was excited because Jesus had worked many miracles. He had, indeed, he had healed a man who was born blind yeah. by, by taking some mud from the ground and putting it on his eyes. Yeah. Yes, and uh, he had just, just a couple of weeks before this, raised somebody from the dead not too far away. Yes, washed it off with, washed the mud off with water, and then the guy could see. Yep, and so... Everybody was really excited. So when they heard that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, they all got their palm branches, and they took their coats, and they laid them on the ground in front of Jesus and his donkey so that his donkey then could ride on it. Yeah. He was trapped? Yeah. You did. Yeah, and, and in fact, he comes into Jerusalem. Everybody is excited, and that's on Sunday, and then... By Friday, um, he's arrested, and he's put on trial, and he's hung on a cross, and he's put into a rock. He's put into a grave on Friday night. Yep. Now, Jesus, as we celebrate Jesus coming into Jerusalem, um, and we sing Hosanna and happy songs, we remember that Jesus came um, to be our king, and the kind of king he came to be is the king who... Um, who comes to help us and to serve us, even if that means dying on the cross. Yep. And, um, and after our celebration, five days later, he died. Just five days. It's, yep. It, and it was a five days. Yep, five days until, until Good Friday. Now, um, uh, after Jesus comes into Jerusalem, people had put their, their coats on the ground. What do you think they did with the coats? They put them on the ground, and then, but then um, we have brought our coats here today to, um, to give to um, people through Salvation Army who might not otherwise need coats. Now, um, we might have thought that we didn't need coats anymore because, you know, it's springtime. <laughs> and, but did you, get, did you get snow this just yesterday or the day before? Yeah. Yes. And did your, electri did your electricity go off? Yeah. Oh, and did, was it kind of chilly? Yeah. yeah. No, no, you're, yeah. We're very fortunate because we have houses, and uh, even when the electricity goes off, um, we can still be kind of warm for a while. But there are people in the world, and there are people in our community um, who don't have a place to live or don't have good coats. And so what happened this last weekend, you know, they may, they may not have been very warm or had coats to wear. And so um, we bring these coats up as a way of celebrating Jesus coming into Jerusalem because they all put their coats on the ground. And, um, but then we're going to take these coats and we're going to give them to Salvation Army so that, um, so that people who don't have coats will um, be able to at least be, be warm when it snows again this next week. Um, but uh, would, you, would you join with me? We're going to pray over these coats. And uh, sometime in the very near future, in the next week or two, people are going to be putting these on and wearing them. And it's going to be keeping them warm. So would you come over here and just um, gather around, put your hand on one of these coats. Okay. So can you yep, put your hand on the coats? There we go. Put your hands on the coats. Can you reach? Okay. All right, and then would you pray with me? Yeah. Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to be our king, to serve us by dying on the cross. Help us, Lord, 
to follow you, follow you. And, to like you and to serve like you do. Bless these coats, Bless these coats. and the people who will wear them. Keep them warm. Keep them warm. Wrap, them up in your love. Wrap them up in your love and help them to know how loved they are by you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Let's wave our palm branches one more time. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. All right. Thank you very much for coming up. You can, um, if you're going to Sunday school, you can follow Christy. And if you're going back to your folks, you can do that. All right. And the rest of us, um, you know, Jesus comes to be our king. He comes to serve. We celebrate that, um, even as we remember that he came to die. So join us as we sing together our next hymn. On that Palm Sunday, the parade started out. It started out to be a, a, a celebration, a, a processional of, of celebration and victory. Um, but it soon turned into a, a funeral procession. And so on Palm Sunday, the, the traditional readings for this day begin on, with the celebration, but they help us to see where this parade is going to end. Um, it ends. Um, at Jesus' cross, and Sue is reading for us today then the, Palm, the Passion Sunday gospel um, about Jesus dying. The reading today is Matthew 27, 11 through 54. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to releasing a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner named Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus the man who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy 
that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of these two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I'm innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children and he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled the man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, King of the Jews. The two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The rebel who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until there, three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabathnia, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of their tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurions and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly this man was God's son. This ends the reading. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, we, um, we come together and we praise Jesus today with all of, the, all of the, uh, the people of Jerusalem who were waiting for so many years for the Messiah, for the king to come. And finally, the king was riding into Jerusalem on, on, uh, on the back of a donkey, just like it had been prophesied um, so many years before. 
um, people were excited, and uh, this was the culmination of, of everything that they had been waiting for, and, and indeed the culmination of, of what Jesus had, had come for um, at the very beginning, from the time he was born, and even from the time before the creation began. Um, it was a, a joyful celebration. We've all had celebrations, uh, and maybe you've um, heard it before, maybe from a parent, maybe from a coach or a friend. Um, maybe you've said it to your spouse after some great success, um, something that, is, that you're celebrating, um, something you have done. Um, maybe you've heard this phrase, don't let it go to your head. Yep, um, we hear it. We hear it a, a lot, um, especially people who are as accomplished and successful as all of you. I'm sure you've heard it a lot. Um, beware of the big head. It is important to uh, to beware of a big head, you know, because it is a common and a very dangerous malady that afflicts that afflicts many. Um, people have lost friends. From a big head, they have uh, gone on from spectacularly successful games to lose the next one. Uh, they've gone out and foolishly squandered their winnings and ended up bankrupt. They've forgotten who they are and where they come from, and have lost all the people who have meant so much to them while they were climbing their way to the top all because they let the success or the cheers go to their heads. Now, Jesus was in danger of that, I think, on that Palm Sunday day, um, when he rode into Jerusalem and all the people shouted and waved their branches and said, Hosanna, hail to the King of Israel, hail King Jesus. I mean, this is what Jesus had been aiming for all of his life. It was why he came, to be king and to be acclaimed as king. Hail, King Jesus. Hosanna, King Jesus. Welcome to your throne, King Jesus. Well, the devil had offered this very thing to him at the beginning of his ministry. When Jesus was out in the wilderness three years earlier, the, the devil, Satan, had, had taken Jesus up to the, to the top of this uh, the high of a very high mountain, and the devil showed him all the kings of the world. And, and the devil, if you remember, in this temptation said, uh, all this I will give to you. See all of those people down there? See all of those towns and the cities? See this world down below? Um, I, all of this I will give to you if you will just bow down and worship me. You don't have to do all the work. You don't have to go through all of the exercise. You don't have to, to suffer. Um, you can have it, Jesus, the easy way. I'll just give it to you. Um, please, just uh, bow down and worship me. Well, Jesus didn't do it um, the easy way. He could have. He could have done it the easy way. He, um, he, he didn't. Um, he didn't take uh, the easy way. He didn't take the devil's offer. He worked for this day. He didn't just let the devil hand it to him. He didn't just inherit this kingdom. Um, he worked and slaved and suffered and died. He had gone without. He had stayed up late at night. He had put up with fools. He had healed tons of sick folks. He had cast out demons. He had made bread and fish for people, even, even raised uh, people from the dead just a couple of weeks ago. He had earned this praise. All of these people shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Hail to the king. Hail to you, King Jesus. He had earned this praise. All these people lined up here shouting, um, praise you, Jesus. It was time now um, to ride on down that road with all of that crowd, right up to the palace. It was time to kick those buggers out. And he could have done it. All of Jerusalem had been waiting for him for a thousand years. They were ready 
They were on the edge of the seats. No, they weren't on their seats anymore. They were in the streets. They were in the streets with their palm branches and branches from trees, and, and they were ready. They would have thrown themselves down. Not just palm branches thrown down on the ground. Not just their coats would they have thrown down before Jesus. They would have thrown down their lives. They would have given their lives that day to install him as king. He was God to them. And indeed, Jesus was God. And that was the really remarkable thing. That is what really impressed St. Paul um, about a couple years later, as, as Paul was reflecting on Jesus. Uh, Paul was a, a climber. He was the golden boy of his time. He was probably the leading Pharisee of his generation. He had been sent on important and sensitive missions. St. Paul um, was on his way to joining the great Sanhedrin, the high court. There was the one that um, condemned Jesus to death. I think one of the things that, that really grabbed St. Paul at the end was how Jesus and him were so much alike that way. Golden boys. Um, the, the greatest people of their generations. But what grabbed St. Paul when he is converted was that Jesus had turned his back on all of the glory and power and praise that St. Paul had been working so hard for. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 2, he says, even though Jesus existed in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. He became just like us, Paul writes. He, the, the son of the Most High God, the son of the great king and emperor of the universe, the master of us all, he became one of us. Indeed, he was one of us. And then St. Paul says he went even further and humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus did not let it all go to his head. He had come to earth. He had come to this, this point and this time on earth, not just for himself. Jesus had come for us. Jesus came asking, um, not what can you do for me, but rather what can I do for you? And what we needed more than anything else is Jesus rode into Jerusalem that day with all that crowd shouting, Hail King Jesus, what we needed more than anything else, more than money, more than power, more than uh, winning the World Series, what we needed most of all was to be saved. To be saved from tyrants. To be saved from self-centeredness. To be saved from everybody putting themselves and their own interests before everyone else. And so that's what Jesus did. He put us first. He put our needs first. He put our interests ahead of his own. By his death and resurrection, he established then a new kingdom, a, a, a kingdom that was like anything else in, in all of the world before that or ever since then. He came and established a kingdom of love, a kingdom where people put the needs of others ahead of their own interests, a kingdom where people love and care and do what is right and not just what will help them get ahead. Jesus loved you and me and our neighbors and the people across the, the, the town from us and the people across the world, he loved us more than anything else. He put us ahead of his own comfort, even ahead of his own life. He wanted us, he wanted you, more than all of the cheers, more than all of the glory, more than all of the power that could have been his. He put us first. He put you first. So Paul says, 
let that same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. To the Philippians and to us, Paul writes, don't do anything from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. This is how Jesus saved us, after all, putting our interests before his. This is what he saved us for, putting others' interests before us. This is what his kingship and his kingdom are all about. So, beware the big head. <laughs> I know it's hard. I know it's hard because you all are very special people. You all are very talented people. You all are very gifted people. You all are very important people. You are all so cool. Angels rejoice because of you. Jesus told us that. Angels in heaven rejoice over you and me. But don't let their cheers go to your head. It's, it's not all about being better than everybody else or richer than everybody else or even being so successful and comfortable you don't need everybody else. It's about love. And it's about serving others. So, you know, let that sink down out of these big fat heads. Not my big fat. Okay. Let that sink down out of our, out of our heads so our heads don't get so big and fat. Let it sink down into our hearts. And let it sink down into our hands and into our feet, into our lives, and out to others. Would you uh, join me then in singing about Christ, our, our life, who came to give us life, his life. I invite you to rise if you um, are able. pray. Hail, King Jesus. Hosanna to you who comes in the name of the Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who even though you were in the form of God, even though you are God, you did not consider um, that power and that position to be something to be grasped and held on to. But we thank you that you came down into our world to become one of us, to share our lives, and finally to take our sin, to go into Jerusalem and, and, and uh, withstand the, the temptation of the big fat head to go to the cross and there to suffer and die for us that we might be forgiven. We confess to you today, Lord, that it was because of our sin that you had to go through all of this. It was because of our sin, uh, because of our conceit, because of our self-centeredness um, that, that you came into the world to set us free from all of that by dying and by rising and then by offering to us life um, by faith in you. We confess to you, Lord, and, and pray for your forgiveness today and uh, ask you, um, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, gracious God, also for the forgiveness that you give us. Um, we thank you for the forgiveness that Jesus won for us, and we thank you for the forgiveness that you allow us to share with others. Be with us, Lord, as we celebrate Jesus' um, kingship. Help us to live in that kingdom of love. Help us to share your love and forgiveness and peace and help with uh, the people all around us. Bless those who are going to be receiving these coats. And Lord, help us um, to share even more, to share our very selves with the people around us who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you'd be with those who are sick and who are in need of your healing and strength. We pray for Matt, Lord. We pray for, um, for Tammy. We pray for Mark and, and Ellen. We pray, Lord, for Bethany and Kathy. We pray, Lord, for Brendan and, and uh, Josh. We pray for Irene and, and Terry and Christine, for Cindy and Barb, for Kim and Jamie and Earl. Um, we pray for Gwenda and Van, for Sue, for Nancy. We pray for all of those, Lord, who are in need of your healing and strength, for Joe and Jenny, too. Grant them and all of those that you know who are calling out to you even now. Grant them your healing. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are missing loved ones, Lord, today. Um, we uh, pray that you would comfort them and, and give them your peace as they celebrate and as we celebrate resurrection um, and Easter. We pray especially, too, for Denise as, as she um, takes uh, her final steps and makes her final journey home to be with you. Pray that you would give her and, and her whole family, Ron, um, your peace and comfort and strength in these times. Lord, in your mercy. Father, you know the, the thoughts and needs of our hearts, and so we lift them up to you, um, knowing and, and believing that you have come for us in your son, Jesus. And so you will hear and answer it to the best of what we need. We thank and praise you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus has indeed come, the king for us. Um, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's share that peace with one another in this kingdom of love that he has come to, um, to bring into this place. You may be seated. Um, at this time, we um, receive our offering so that, uh, so that the good news of, of God's love in Jesus might reach out into the world and his kingdom of love might go even further out than these walls. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we um, offer you these, these gifts that you have given to us as just a token of our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We pray that you would use them, Lord, so that uh, all the world might come to know you and uh, praise you. Um, Hosanna in the highest. Amen.
I'd like to invite you to stand if you're able um, as we come to the Lord's table and as he um, meets us with the body and blood that he shed for us so that we might um, live in his kingdom and know his love forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise at all times and in all places, most uh, glorious, almighty, and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross. You've transformed death into life. And so with all of the angels above, with all the saints, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise and glorify your name, evermore praising you and singing. It was at supper on Thursday, um, just four days after Jesus rode into Jerusalem. He gathered his disciples together around the table. He took bread. He blessed it. He blessed his heavenly Father. He broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so remembering him and his love for us, we pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As our communion assistants um, come up, and if you would do that now, that would be great. Let us sing together, um, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. We invite you then to come to the Lord's table and, and receive his love and grace here. Um, as you do, we have um, gluten-free bread available. Please just ask for it when you come if you would like that. And then also we have um, grape juice in, the, in the, center of the, tape, uh, the center of the tray and wine around the outside, the red liquid. Come, for all things are ready. 
Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Our king has come not just to take his throne, but to uh, serve us and to bring us into his kingdom, a kingdom of love. And so may this body and blood of our Savior, who has loved us so very much, even unto death, may it strengthen us in faith and help us then to live that kingdom of love, live that love out in our lives. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you again for the, the, the amazing gift of your love that you have given to us in, in your son, Jesus, who came not to, uh, to be acclaimed and, and glorified and, and uh, praised and sit on a comfy throne, but he came to, to come and serve us and to save us. Be with us now as we go our way. Help us, Lord, to, to go out not with fat heads, but with uh, full hearts and uh, full hands to serve and to bring your love to others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you then and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you all his peace. Amen. We have um, a couple of announcements this morning. Um, just a reminder about... Um, the Lutheran World Relief Care Kit that, that we've been collecting through Lent. Um, Palm Sunday is technically the end of Lent, last day of Lent. Um, but uh, we're collecting uh, a towel and hairbrush and um, fingernail clipper and toothbrush. Oh, I recognize that. And, <laughs> and soap, two bars of soap. You wrap it all up in the towel and uh, or just bring pieces of it, and you can leave it out in the narthex, and um, we're giving those to Lutheran World Relief this year to, um, to help people who are in need. And then also, it costs $2.65 to send one of these packages um, to someone else, um, and if you can help with um, $2.65 to send that package, that would be great, um, and Lutheran World Relief doesn't need to use that money for shipping. Um, and then, this is uh, Holy Week coming up. And um, Pastor Carroll is going to share with us um, a very special opportunity that we have this year again on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. It was 10 years ago now that we visited, um, it was called the Calvaria in, Brata, not Bratislava, Banska Stavnica in Slovakia. And what that was was Stations of the Cross in various buildings going up a hill. And then, you know, you follow the life of Jesus and the sufferings of Jesus up to the top. And then you come down with more stories about Jesus. And um, there's artwork and um, it's just stunning. It's very old. That kind of um, warmed my heart because I've always been kind of a fan of Stations of the Cross. and. We will be having stations, not anything like what we saw in Slovakia, nothing that beautiful, but something to walk through to kind of immerse ourselves into the, to the Holy Week story and also um, a step into Easter. So that, those will be available on Thursday and Friday when the building is open and also before and after the services. and. Um, you can read the purple sheet and learn a little bit more about it and then spend a little extra time immersing yourself in the story of Jesus' death and resurrection. Thanks. Thanks. Um, this is a, a, a wonderful um, week, a week of, of journey, and uh, it, it is even more so as we take the time to think about and reflect on all that it means and all that Jesus has done for us. Oh, wait. And then um, um, also in the back, we have um, um, sign up for Easter flowers. You can still do that. And uh, um, Bobby's got information in the back for you. Also then this week coming up on um, Wednesday, um, there is no Lenten service this Wednesday. There's no confirmation this Wednesday. But there is food this Wednesday. Um, 
and we'll have an, our community meal again this Wednesday night, again, at the normal times, 5.15 to 6.30. Um, so come for that. And then Maundy Thursday at 6.30 p.m., we'll be gathering to um, celebrate Jesus' Last Supper. And on Good Friday, we gather beneath the cross to reflect on, on what, what all this means and what Christ has done for us. Um, and again, Monday, uh, Thursday and Friday, you can do the Stations of the Cross um, during the day, the build, when the building's open, should be open most of the time, and then, um, but especially before and after services. And then Easter, um, a week from today, 7 a.m., we have our sunrise service. It's uh, all the churches in, in Prescott um, gathered together at Freedom Park for a sunrise service at 7. If, um, uh, if it's snowing, it'll be inside. That's a kind of a, a joke. Okay, and then, um, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a joke, was it? April Fools. No, that wasn't. That wasn't funny. But um, anyway, and then at 9:30 and at 11 a.m. 9:30, it's you know lots. There'll be lots of people here, so um, feel free to come at 11 if you would like to. But 9:30 or 11 for um, for Easter worship, and then um, Christy and the youth are putting on Easter breakfast again, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. it's being served. So um, it's a, a joyful day, um, even though it's going to end in a funeral. It's a joyful day because Jesus is coming for us. The, our God is here, and, and he loves us. And so we're going to follow him all the way to Good Friday and all the way to Easter. And we're going to sing two verses of Lead On, O King Eternal. Please rise if you are able. And kids, come and play for us. Read on, O King Eternal, the day of March has come. Henceforth in fields of conquest, your tents will be.